Then the Saturday, cherry on the cherry on top of the cake, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first game as caretaker manager for Manchester United, and we won 5-1. 5 1. 5 1. 5. We scored five goals. Manchester United scored five goals. You know what? I don't even recognize that penalty because um, we didn't, ha- we didn't, we weren't really under threat. Cardiff were pretty shit, so I'm not gonna, you know, gloat too hard about the result. So it, offensively, it probably was a five nil, but you know, there's still some things we need to iron out in terms of our defense. But we won five. We won by five goals playing attacking football on the front foot. Quick one two passes all around the box, uh, triangles everywhere. Our attacking players running around the pitch with freedom. Uh, some of our attacking lineup, especially like Martial, hugging that left hand side of the pitch and absolutely terrorizing the right back of for Cardiff. Like it was so, it was night and day. It was amazing to see. I think we all kind of expected to have a little bit of a manager bump, right? New manager bump comes in. Everyone's kind of trying really hard um, to kind of uh, put in effort and stuff. Like we see that quite often happens when new manager come into teams. But I didn't think we'd have that much of a difference in terms of our attacking intent with having Oliver Gunnar Solskjaer there. But I think thinking about it a bit more, and and you know, and come to the realization that you know we had in Mourinho probably one of the most pragmatic, uh, defensive-minded uh, coaches of the big leagues out there at the moment. Right? He's not. He's not. Uh, he's not exactly the most trendy coach in terms of his tactics. It was no surprise that maybe if another manager comes in who kind of opts for a more attacking style of play, that it was going to be absolute night and day from the performance that we saw on the Mourinho. And we saw that with Solskjaer. He, I think he only had like 48 hours of the players. Uh, Carrick and, and McKenna had the first two days of the week. And then uh, I think um, Solskjaer took over on the Thursday and the Friday. So he didn't really have that much time to implement any you know, systems of play or whatever. But just the kind of ex- the, 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 ma- the kind of mantra or the the things that he was coming out with post-match, post the game, saying that he wants the players to express themselves. He says, we've got really good attacking players there. He wants them to kind of go out and enjoy themselves again and, and see how, and kind of feel again how amazing it is to play for such a big club. And we kind of saw that performance from the very first minute on, from the very, very first minute on. Effort aside, forget the effort, forget the closing down, forget the high pressing and all that stuff, right? I think just the, the, the touches that the players were taking over across the pitch just showed that there was a difference. Because I think if you've watched Man United, if you've watched any team that struggles, what usually happens is that the players on the pitch start hiding. And I've played football, right? It's never to that kind of level. I played kind of like standard Sunday League football. And you know, when you're having a bad game, you hide on a pitch. You can hide. You can like purposely stand behind players that are marking you. You can purposely stand away from the player that's got the ball in order to not receive it in tight areas because you don't want to make a mistake. But you will receive it in open areas and start passing it square, start passing it sideways, not really taking the chance to pass and to do kind of forward passes that, that have a high risk of being intercepted. And we saw the difference underneath Olegan Solskjaer. We had players who were taking the ball, receiving the ball in really tight areas. Uh, we had Matic, one of the players that's been um, criticised by a lot of fans, me included, who is kind of for the last 18 months or so has been probably one of the worst performing players in our side, mostly because Mourinho didn't rotate him through the team, but also uh, basically because he was played in a two-man midfield where most of his most of his time was spent passing the ball sideways to either a right-back or a full-back, never to somebody in their feet up, up front. Whenever Rashford would make runs previously, he wouldn't pass it to him. But we saw the difference playing on Oligan Solskjaer. We saw or Matic trying to pick balls over the top for a striker to run onto. We saw him spraying the ball out wide to right back, so whoever was on the wing in order to receive it to make an attacking run. We saw him run forward towards the goal. Like, insane to see. Insane, 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 insane. What a difference it made. And um, just the general mood, the happiness of the, of the side. Like, we got luck. We got quite lucky in terms of uh, scoring the goal really early on. Uh, Marcus Rashford scored the free kick, um, which again came from Pogba trying to make something happen outside the area. He tried to do a little one-two around the player, got taken down. Rashford takes a reference to free kick and rifles it into the bottom corner. Looking at it again, because I watched the game back for two or three times, the full match, because it was that good of a game. Um, you could blame the keeper for not saving that. Um, the, the, the free kick that Rashford took and uh, it was hit exactly where the keeper should have been. The wall was covering the other side. And Efrens really should have been covering the other side of the goal. And instead, he kind of got caught in two minds, stood kind of in the middle and, you know, had no chance by the ball came beside him. Um, and just generally, the play was just amazing to see. Amazing to see us playing with such attack and intent. 
Honestly, Martial was on fire. Rashford was on fire. Um, Lingard was on fire. Lingard was absolutely everywhere over that pitch. I think his average touch map had his spots like covering the entire front half of that pitch. We had fullbacks that were advancing into the opposing area's half, which never ever happens. Usually, whenever we had that, when Mourinho was in charge, he wanted that's what he wanted. He wanted a bit more of a compact team, so the fullbacks tucked in a little bit more, and our entire backline was in our half. But if you saw the kind of um, if you saw the game, you would have seen our two centre backs in Jones and Lindelof uh, in our half, right? They're the only two people in our half, and then the right the fullbacks in uh, Shaw and Young were inside the opposing half, like into forward and offering up that extra um, option of an attack going forward from the from the flanks. I think whenever I saw the lineup going forward before the match started, I think we all kind of thought that, you know, this is just going to be another one of those games where um, we kind of played the same sort of Mourinho side. There wasn't as many changes that we all kind of hoped there would be. Uh, when I saw the lineup, I was a little bit disappointed. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But then when we started playing and the interchanging of the team and stuff, it just all kind of exactly, exactly made sense. Um, so here's the team, right? The team that we played against Cardiff so you kind of a standard team really for the most part uh you had uh, Lindelof and Jones playing at center back which I was surprised at seeing Jones being picked there because he's been one of our most erratic defenders and I think um of all defenders we have available he's probably the one that's probably the most unreliable due to just he's he's a horrendous injury record and generally just being a bit of a shit defender everything that he does always involves him rushing always involves a last ditch tackle but also also I decided to go go for him instead of Bailey then we had Young and Shaw at the full backs and then we had a midfield field of Herrera, Matic and Pogba. For the most part, Matic was kind of covering the back four. Herrera was kind of a, a bit forward and then a, a bit more in front of Matic and then Pogba was the most advanced in midfield. And what actually happened if you saw the game was that with that happening, it freed up Matic, it freed up Herrera so that he could then be a little bit more uh, box to box in that midfield area and just do a lot of those first time uh, passes forward into the attack. Now, Herrera's never going to be Xavi, right? He's never going to be a fucking Busquets or whatever. He's not that level. But what he does do really well is that he gets the ball out of his feet really quickly. He's very good at kind of scanning the area around him before he receives the ball, receiving it on one touch, and then distributing it straight away. And because he... He's got a bit of an engine around him. He's really, really got. He's got high, high, high levels of endurance. He can cover lows of that space in in between the mid, the kind of the mid midfield and the up front. And then you got Pogba furthest forward. who's kind of bit, got a bit of a free roll, but he was more on the left hand side, which has been kind of his like uh, most favorite position of midfield, where he can cut in and maybe have some shots on target or dink some balls over the top. So he had a very, very balanced midfield instead of having Matic and Herrera effectively holding hands in front of the, uh, of the defense and then. Lango Pogba with all that too much space in front of him to do everything once in between you had Matic you had Herrera just in front of him then you had Pogba then you had uh, Lingard dropping in and kind of covering his flanks an absolutely sterling performance now the issue that we have here going forward I think is for the players missing I think for a Sanchez, if you saw us playing today yesterday you would have probably over the weekend if you're Sanchez you'd be very confident you'd be able to play because that quick attack in football, that kind of like quick passing around the box, one, two touches, loads of triangles everywhere, Sanchez was going to flourish. You're going to see, we'll hopefully see the best of him playing that system. Because I think when Mourinho was here, he tried to play Sanchez as like a quintessential number nine and kind of pump little balls long to him. Even though Sanchez's hold up play is quite good for how small he is, that's not his strength. His main strength is kind of running through the channels, running behind strikers, running behind the defender story, and maybe the one, two touches around the box. And because he's, he's finishing around the box is fucking lethal. So if you're Sanchez, you're going to be confident you're going to get into a team. If you're Lukaku and you're watching that game, you're probably not going to be as confident, but still I'd have a, I'd, I'd still say he has a, he has a, a future in the side of Raw because I think with drug with with uh with Lukaku sorry the issue that I think I had with him especially with Mourinho what he was playing with him what you saw was that he because he looks like he looks so physically imposing right we as automatically assumed that he would be the next Pogba the next uh, the next big striker like Drogba for instance right but that is not necessarily the case. He's not in that mode. If anything, he's more of a fox in a box. He's more of a, a Michael Owen type striker, just like with the 
ridiculous physical build, right? But so what he needs, he needs balls through the channels. He needs balls in behind, over, over, over the top of defenders for him to run onto, crosses into the box so he can head up. But he doesn't need long balls from the defence all the way up front for him to bring down, touch into the midfield and then run onto. That's not his game. His game is running off the shoulder of the last defender. So I think with the side of play that we're playing now, there is a possibility too, with Pogba playing in that advanced role with Lingard running around in between the lines and with Martial uh, hugging left hand side of the pitch. There's a possibility that Lukaku, we could probably could see the best of him too. But then the same token, there also is the, uh, the, the thinking that Lukaku doesn't necessarily play well in that kind of fast-flowing football team, counter-attacking in that regard. Rashford, for all these kind of um, inconsistencies with his finishing, he plays that role really well. He ran the whole entire game. Up and down. I think also uh, there's a stat there. I think that was the first game in the whole season that we've outran our position. Now the running stats, running up to stats, whatever can sometimes you can read too much into them, right? So because somebody covered uh, a amount of distance, it doesn't necessarily mean they played well. But I think that goes to show just how much intensity they were playing at, right? So I don't think you can get that kind of level of intensity with Lukaku. This is my opinion. But I think in general, um, it was a great game. I think everyone kind of like did themselves justice. We have, we're have we going to have much sterner tests coming up. I think Cardiff were probably uh, uh, the perfect side for Solskjaer to kind of get his first game underneath his belt. They're struggling for confidence. They're probably going to be one of the teams that can be favoured to go down. Uh, they had effectively no threat uh, going forward apart from Murphy on the left-hand side who gave Ashley Young some problems but for the most part they didn't really have any sort of um, problems that they were causing us for the game um, there was another player that came on as well Zohor Zohor is it Zohor number 10 for Cardiff came on towards the end of the game uh, he he played pretty well and he, can, he probably did himself justice to probably get a start yeah Kenneth Zohor he come on the 60th minute he probably did quite well but for the most part they were quite uh, toothless up front and we exploited their defensive um uh, insecurities for the most part. I think we'll have much sterner tests to come. I think it would be good to see what different tactics he operate and uh, Matosha kind of uh, uses in other games to kind of uh, take into account the limitations of our team. But I'm also liking the fact that he's realised that we might not be as strong defensively, but we have some of the best attacking players in the league. I think in terms of our attacking lineup, in terms of what we the 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 options that we have coming off the bench, I don't think I'd swap my options for any other team in the, in the league. But the the one part we are suffering from a lot, we don't have, have any quality. It's really in, in defense, especially for the fullbacks. We have ensure somebody that hasn't really played that many games. We have Dan Delo, who's probably inexperienced. We have Luke uh, Ashley Young, who's a converted right back, a converted winger, sorry, and then we have centre backs who necessarily haven't necessarily pulled up any trees. So that's where we can kind of be a bit shaky. But I like the fact that social is regard is kind of um really in a position where he'd rather concentrate on us scoring more goals in our position as opposed to trying to shut the opposition out, which Marino did. So overall, a great game. I can't wait for the game against Huddersfield on Wednesday. That should be another, probably a bit more of a sterner test. Huddersfield are a much better team than Cardiff are. They've got a more astute manager able to kind of maybe change things up, maybe ask us different questions. And plus, everyone's seen us play now. They've seen the way, what we have and what we can offer. So maybe it's going to be a bit more of a harder test going forward. But overall, great game. I was happy with it. I'm happy with the level of performance. Happy to see Pogba have such a uh, dominant performance too. He really kind of showed everyone up. Um, who was kind of criticizing him and saying that you know he wasn't playing for the manager, which he obviously wasn't. But we do know there's a there, there's a talented player there. There's a real world class talent there who obviously needs to kind of step up now because you know he's got no excuses either. Mourinho, the guy that he hates, has finally gone. Now he needs to really show us what he's capable of doing. But yeah, five one man, five one. It's fucking incredible. And then our uh, manager to be, if you believe all the rumors online, our manager to be in Pochettino also won his games, right? Tottenham won away at Everton 6 2, which is no mean feat. Everton, I know Marcus Silva doesn't really necessarily play the most defensive type football, and it is all out attack. Both teams just kind of go for it. But, you know, Everton are a far better side than they were in yesteryear. So for Tottenham to go there and win uh, by six goals to two is a fucking insane. He's really done the business there, especially without spending any sort of money as well over the summer. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next six months. I guess if Solskjaer wins the league, I'm sorry, if Solskjaer wins the Champions League with United and then wins the, I don't know, the FA Cup or something along those kind of lines, I guess maybe he might get the job. That's probably the only way he's going to keep his job. Um, but then also there is the question of like, would Pochino want to come to United? Well, it might just be a Diego Simeone thing, right? It might be like maybe the grass isn't always green on the other side. Diego Simeone has had loads of chances to leave Atletico Madrid. 
and never has left them. And yeah, it's quite, you know, it's, you know what? I built this team from scratch. Let me just stay and see what I can do next year, the year after that. Plus, Tottenham are moving into a new stadium. There might be more funds available. They never know. There might be more investment coming in. It might be the worst time to leave Tottenham in that regard, to, to go to a United club that's a bit dysfunctional at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see what happens next. Let's just see what happens if if we if we don't get punchy. Let's just see what we do next. Do we then go for another unconventional manager? Do we decide to go for somebody who hasn't got any qualifications? Uh, I mean, CV wise in terms of trophies, I'm interested to see what direction we're going next. But yeah, overall, five one two nine against Cardiff. I'm happy as Larry.